speaker is going to be uh, David Schiedermeyer, who is a specialist in palliative care and practices at the Theta Care Palliative Care Program in Nina, Wisconsin. Uh, David maintains a compassionate doctor-patient relationship as a focus, and he champions effective teamwork and collaborative care. He's the author of Putting the Soul Back in Medicine, Reflection on Compassion and Ethics. And a couple of years ago, he gave what I thought was one of the most brilliant presentations we, we've ever heard at one of the McLean uh, talks, where he, he combined uh, narrative and storytelling, patient stories, poetry and music. And I think, judging by the setup here, we're going to see something of that same type of ilk here. And so uh, David's going to talk uh, about the Jack of Hearts. Thank you so much. into this Dylan song, Jack of Hearts. <laughs> it's actually called Lily, Rosemary, and the Jack of Hearts. I spoke the first verse for you using this blues riff backing, Muddy Waters type backing. Instead of the original sing-songy chords and melody, that's because I suspect Dylan didn't like them. He sang this song only once in concert. Just for comparison, he's sung positively 4th Street over a thousand times in concert. And no wonder with this stunning chord progression. But I'm not saying Dylan didn't like the words to the Jack of Hearts song or that the song isn't important to him. I think it's one of his most important songs. He authorized two screenplays based on the story, but neither came to light. In fact, I think this song is the key to understanding Dylan's fascination with loving and leaving. But I admit that I'm going to tell you a bit of a shaggy dog story. Suppose we start at the Fox Valley Humane Association where just to stay sane, my dad and I volunteer every Friday afternoon, maybe it's been uh, six, eight years now. Our job is matchmaking. We show uh, dogs and cats to potential adopters. <coughs> Many of our animals are strays, but most are surrendered. Over the years, we've learned that people have all kinds of reasons. No time is the most important uh, and common reason. No time. Can't afford allergies, didn't get along with the other animals, owner moved, can't take the dog, owner is sick, can't take care of the animal. And our policy, of course, is just to take the animal in and say, thank you. For the stray animals, of course, we have to think of a, a new name. The kennel staff favor epic names like Thor or Gone Husky, Loki, a blue-eyed cat. Zeus, a charming little terrier. But who would name a dog Hamlet? <laughs> Only someone like Bob Dylan. Bob's dog Hamlet was supposed to be a purebred, but he became a rock and roll shaggy mutt, kind of a giant poodle shepherd mix. And here's where the story gets interesting. Dylan gave Hamlet as a gift to bass player Rick Danko and the band 
when, they, when he was recording with them at their house in Woodstock. But Hamlet was no gift. Bob didn't give him to the band. He had to get rid of him. Bob surrendered him. Bob left him. According to Barney Hoskins, who chronicles Dylan and the band in his book, Small Town Tales, Hamlet and Bob weren't getting along too well. He writes that Danko told him, I pulled up to Bob's one day, and it looked like Hamlet was trying to bite Bob in the ass. <laughs> and Bob was trying to kick him in the ass. He writes that Danko, uh, and so the truth is, like the people who bring their dogs into our shelter, Bob had to part with his dog for both of their sakes. If he would have brought Hamlet into our, into our shelter, maybe he would have told us, no time for the animal. And thankfully, like most of the dogs in our shelter, Hamlet actually had a happy ending. His new life with Dango and the band was reportedly a good one. He's in their best publicity, uh, best, uh, publicity photos, and it's obvious that he liked wearing top hats. <laughs> in fact, he fit right into the dress style of rockabilly, 1967. And speaking of former ankle biters, I remember a shelter dog named Solo, a long-haired chihuahua and particularly uh, nasty little dude. When we passed by his kennel, he curled his teeth, he bared his uh, and he growled, he kind of bared his lip. He was unadoptable, a ferocious little junkyard dog. Imagine the coincidence when I found out that Solo was my palliative care patient's dog. The man was dying of cirrhosis and he had to surrender Solo a week or two earlier. The man's mother came into the shelter to adopt Solo. She was then reconciled to her son, whom she hadn't seen in years, so she asked to bring him Solo up to see him in the hospital. My patient was ecstatic to see that his mother had adopted his dog. Solo was a perfect little gentleman up in the hospital, surprising all of us. And then the next day, Solo died. The man never knew it. He died the same day, too. They were both knocking on Heaven's door at the sale at the same time. <laughs> special about our, our work in ethics, consultation, and palliative care is also what's special at the shelter. You can't judge the heart of a person or a dog or cat by how they look, or sometimes even how they act. Doors down the boys finally made it through the wall and cleaned out the bank safe. It said they got off with quite a haul. Well, in the darkness by the riverbed, they waited on the ground for one more member. With business back in town. But they couldn't go no further without the jack of hearts. My song's main character, the jack of hearts, is not only the head of a bank robbing gang, he's a callous lover. At the shelter, the adopter, who is like the jack of hearts, is someone without the time or compassion, or connection. The jack of hearts wants a pet who will please him or her right now. A perfect animal, a pet who will accept being left alone and lonely. A pet which won't need any help or extra love. I remember a funeral home director who wanted a dog, as he said, just to make my funeral home look homey. 
Not a bad idea, really, because Lord knows funeral homes lack that homey feeling. <laughs> My dad and I brought him a dog with a crooked tail, which is just about as homey as it gets. <laughs> and, you know, it just wouldn't do. And it was a lovely dog, really. The nicest in the kennel. The kind of smart and gentle dog we see only once or twice a year. He left without a dog. The Jack of Hearts in Dylan's song leaves town without making any permanent connections. Two women, of course Lily and Rosemary, have fallen for him. And Rosemary kills Jack, Jack's rival, who's called the King of Diamonds. Rosemary kills the King of Diamonds for him, and she hangs. Jack, oh, uh, or is it Bob? slips away, and he meets his men, or is it the band, down by the river, riding off in the sunset. But you know, he leaves Lily lonely. The cabaret was empty now. A sign said closed for repairs. Lily had already taken all the dye out of her hair. She was thinking about her father, who she very rarely saw. And she was thinking about Rosemary. And she was thinking about the law. But most of all, He was thinking about the Jack of Hearts. You know, when he wrote this song, Dylan had already left Joan Baez, and then he left his wife, and he was living with his young mistress on an 80-acre farm in Minnesota. He then left her as well. Much was going wrong. Talk about being tangled up in blue. <laughs> I really don't blame him for surrendering Hamlet back then. I only bring up this shaggy dog story because it's the key to understanding Lily, Rosemary, and the Jack of Hearts. The key to this song, and perhaps to Dylan's love life at the time, is to recognize what a drag it was to be Dylan's dog back then. <laughs> it's as simple and complicated as what he did to Hamlet. He didn't bond with them. He left him, and he also left town. Now, Hamlet wasn't perfect either, but you show me a perfect dog, and I'll show you a perfect person. I've learned from working at the shelter that you don't love them and leave them like the jack of hearts. You don't look for a perfect person or a perfect dog. You know, when you're family, you accept and deal with imperfections. You adopt. You keep, you're surprised by joy. Dylan, who is a true genius of both lyrics and chords, well deserving of the Nobel Prize, understands that this is the central tension of all of our lives. This accepting, dealing, staying, versus dreaming, losing, leaving. He knows that for all of us, every evening's empire has returned into sand, vanished from our hands, left us blindly here to stand. Oh, and uh, just one more thing. Uh, um, if you ever decide to adopt a dog like Hamlet, um, my advice would be uh, most often, you know, once you get him home, 
you let them pee on this nice patch of grass instead of the concrete at the shelter. You sit them up on the couch with you and you watch a little TV and you feed them, you brush out his coat a bit. In other words, you show, you love, you show him that you love him like Lily loved the Jack of Hearts. Well, you know, you'll find that a dog like Hamlet, he's not so shaggy after all. And, and just maybe in the jingle jangle of the next morning, instead of biting you in the ankle, maybe he'll come following you. <laughs> This is a, a cigar box guitar that I made. Um, um, speaking of which, at the uh, party tonight, we could sure use somebody that would play a, uh, the piano a little bit for us and guitar. If anybody has those skills, please come on down. So this is, it costs only a couple, maybe 20, 30 bucks to make you. You get yourself a cigar box and this is a hinge. Um, these are doggy bones. My dog likes it. <laughs> these are strings, and my cat likes it. <laughs> you know, you get what you pay for. Or do you, you know, uh, cats are free at our shelter. <laughs> and they are priceless to the person that loves them. Any questions? Or? How much do dogs cost? Dogs? <laughs> we prorate them on how old they are. So I always adopt old dogs because as a palliative care doc, I don't mind seeing them put to sleep. So I've adopted a 12-year-old that was, I think, 80 bucks. The puppies we can get about 350 for. Kittens are also, I think they're 125. You can get money for kittens, but not cats. I, I, uh, I so appreciated this morning's, uh, early morning's talks, and you know, there's a certain resonance of it, I don't mean to compare, but with the animals, uh, there's a certain resonance also with feeding them. We have, we too have a food drive at the shelter. Yes? Oh, sorry. Yes. Is that a four-string? No, it's a, you know, this is a three-string, and um, I will reveal that I'm going to, I built one for Mark, um, and, you know, if you start, I started with a one-string. If, if you play the air guitar, you start with one. <laughs> so, Mark, I got a one-string for you, and we're going to work you up. But three strings, it's tuned G, D, G, so it's the resonance in... Uh, Actually, makes six strings too. Not quite very. Right. 